everybody! So today I have this box and it is my schoolwork from 4th to 6th grade. I haven't looked in here at all um, in preparation for this video. I have no idea what we're going to find, but I wanted to take you along for the ride and it'll hopefully be an entertaining and funny and interesting video. So here we go. Alright, the first thing I have in here is this um, piece of artwork and it's labeled, I don't know if you can read this, but it says Funky Monkey. Um, right now it just says Funk Monkey because the Y fell off. This is um, my writing comp book. I'm not sure what grade it's from. So here we are practicing hooks. Um, how to get the reader pulled into the story. And here was my idea for a great hook in my notes. I never thought leaving one window open would get me kidnapped by a bird. I was so wrong. I don't know quite what I was thinking back then, but I would definitely keep reading that story. Here's another one. It's labeled my sister, even though I don't have a sister. And here's the story. It's pretty short. She'd never been able to find a good rock for her collection, except for that star-shaped one. She would send a shine among the water, and the rocks would come to the surface. As he stepped through the teeny moonlit door, it was afternoon as I shrink. I found this. It's labeled the pumpkin plan. So what this seems to be is like a plan for a paragraph, and I don't know if anybody else did this, but I would all the time in elementary school, I would have like a plan for like one paragraph where you'd have like a topic sentence, and then you'd have like three stars as like the three main points, and then underneath the stars you'd have like details for each point. So this was an assignment where we had to choose whether to convince the person looking, so you were like from the perspective of a pumpkin, right? And there were people walking by and you were trying as a pumpkin to, <laughs> it was like persuasive writing, and you could choose to either convince them to take you home and use you as their jack-o'-lantern or convince them not to. I chose to argue, don't take me home. Here's my topic sentence, don't choose me as a jack-o'-lantern, exclamation point. Star number one, I wouldn't be good as one. Details, my outside is tough and hard to carve. I am very lumpy. Point number two, I'll grow rotten easily. Details, when I grow rotten, I turn blue and my insides turn black. I'll turn rotten in four days. Point number three, if you take me away, I will break. I'll roll onto a knife or fork and splatter everywhere. If I can't find silverware, I have a friend that is a cat and she'll come in and ruin your house. Conclusion, you couldn't get me out of the ground anyway, I'm so stubborn. <laughs> no wonder I decided to take up writing. I was so good at it. This page is just empty except it says, Now look, I wanted to go to an exciting place like where my friend went, but my mom told me that here was just as good. In a city on Saturn called Libanibi City, the rules were different. Of course, the people, the dogs, the cats, the kittens, the cars, and the mares were all the same, along with everything else, but there was one simple rule that was very different. No pets allowed. It was posted up everywhere. Now that may seem a bit odd to you or me, but this was a very serious rule to anyone in this certain city on Saturn. That is, um, except for, um, this one very odd girl. She wanted a pet kitten. Well, she couldn't decide if she wanted an orange one, black one, gray, white, brown, or a mixture of two, three, four, or five colors. So she guessed she wanted kittens. Her parents were very rude and cruel to her, and cared about her brother more than her. She often dreamed of running away and finding a kitten in the forest. One day she vanished to, well, I don't know, um, so the rest of the story will be told by her point of view. I, the narrator, will quit my job. Goodbye. It's a really good story, and if you want me to read the rest of it, you can let me know, but I think that I'm not gonna read all of it, because it's really long. <laughs> Okay, this is my comp book from a little later on, and our teacher had us like put little, like cut things out of magazines and like um, draw things and tape things on um, and like stick stickers on and stuff, and then she laminated all of them. Um, so that's why it's a little bit like kind of shiny, if you can tell at all that it's kind of reflective. I'll just kind of skip around. So you guys know about my dog, Jessie. Um, this is a story I wrote about when I got her, and it's like from my point of view, and I think it was, we were probably supposed to write like a true story and like describe it or whatever. So this is like the story of how we got her. We always joke that it was just because I threw a temper tantrum and that's essentially what happened even though it's like my parents were already kind of thinking of getting a new dog so it was um, like a little bit justified. Ching! We walked into the mall. We went to the pet store just to look in all caps. Just to look. I saw a dog. It was whining and jumping up on the glass. It was a brown cute Dachshund. Oh how I needed it. I <laughs> I could tell I wanted to get out anyway. Please, I whined. Well, well, thought my mom. It, it is kind of cute. 
We took it to a pen and played with it. We thought of names for it, like Jessie and Joy. We ended up naming it Jessie Joy. Just then, I remembered something. One million times in my life, my mom had said, What do you get when you whine? And I had always answered, Hump, nothing. But now my answer will be different. It will be a dog, mom. Now it will be different. Okay, here's a story. Flutter, flutter, flap, flip, swoosh, swish. A blue monarch butterfly named July flies through the canopy. <laughs> she flies furiously fast, for she had to get to her babies. She had... Babbies is apparently how I spelled it, but you know, I'm just using context clues here. She needed to bring them food. At the tree branch they lived in at the tree branch they lived in, three morpho butterflies were waiting for their mother. The oldest, Mary, a ten year old, her tummy started to rumble. She flopped on its back. Behind it there was the youngest. She took a oh, it's hard to read, I'm sorry. She took a step back, May, six year old, so it wouldn't get hurt. But behind it was the youngest, Julia a two-year-old and she fell off the branch. Mary and May peeked off the branch at Julia, looked at each other, and then decided there was nothing they could do. They couldn't fly, they couldn't jump off after her, and pretty soon their mother had arrived, would arrive. She had flowers on her back. Mary and May... Oh, all this is crossed off. I guess I should skip it. Mary and May got an uncomfortable feeling in their throats. Or then they thought they, that their mother cared about Julia more than them. They slowly told their mother how Mary got hungry and flopped on her back, and then how May stepped back because she didn't know she didn't want to get hit, and how Julia had fallen. Their mother understood. Meanwhile, meanwhile Julia fell to the understory, and soon to the forest floor. She landed with a small thump. Guessed she broke her antenna. No, she could still wiggle it. Just then, a big flying rainbow pecked a big pile of dirt in front of her. It must have been a macaw. Her mother had warned her about them. She stepped back and hit something hard. She whirled around and saw a tree trunk. Phew! She had recognized it from the trees going to the emergency level. Suddenly, she fell back over a a. She got up and looked. She stepped back. Na 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 nice s s snake k k k k k. She ho secretly hoped it was a type of tree trunk not yet discovered. After all, it hadn't moved yet, but her luck had just passed. The snake slithered, slithered back out of its spot. Its eyebrows crunched together and it looked somewhat scary. Oh, somewhat. <laughs> she ran for her life, but that wasn't such a good idea. It got closer by the second. Fly, she yelled, and to her surprise, she did. She flew home safely and told them the whole story. They would leave, they would leave to tell their aunt soon. Character development observation slash details. Funny, black glasses, green, blue, hazel eyes, light brown hair, purple sweater, fun, sensitive, blue slip-ons, funny, likes cursive, writes W's like this with like the round W's, writes Y's like this with the little, the curled tail, you know. She writes in fonts. She likes to write in different fonts. Cool hairstyles. All about me by me. My favorite colors are green and blue and I have a friend who eats grass and glue. My eyes and hair are both brown. I love to sell these paper crowns. Hey, it rhymes! Let's see if it continues to do so. My favorite animals are birds and cats. Boy, I am very afraid of bats. I think I have a book of graces. My older brother does have braces. My dad's hair is black as ebony. My mom's always says she loves me. My Dachshund is wild as a lion. My Maltese is calm as a clam. I love getting I love my grandma's Christmas ham. I like the taste of Chinese food. I call my brother little dude. But I'm pretty sure I didn't. I read a diary of a wimpy kid and I use my money in stores and bid. And I think I spend too much money and my dad is very funny. I love myself. Onomatopoeias. Splash goes the ocean waves. Boom goes the deep dark caves. Sneak squeaking goes the mouse. Knock goes the house. The door or bell goes ding dong. Uh, oh, the doorbell. It just has a big space in the middle of the word. I get it now. The doorbell goes ding dong. Boing goes the ping pong. Meow goes the small cat. Flutter goes the little bat. I love onomatopoeias and so do you. Now I need to write about you. That's some really nice rhyming skills. More presents, my mom calls about two days after Christmas. We zipped to the living room and sat down. Mom placed presents in front of all of us. <laughs> my older brother got red wrapping paper with green Christmas trees, I got red and green and yellow striped, and my little brother got red paper with Santa's and green ho-ho-hos. My mom counted to three and we teared open the gifts. What? I asked. You gave us suitcases? 
Yes, I've decided to go to California. And from then on, we go to California every few years. Sounds about right. Cats. Cats are fluffy and they're cute, but they like to chew your boots. And that is all that is on that page. It's in the shape of infinity. I'm really excited to read it to you. We'll see what, how this works. Okay. Be good, be me, be free. Be good, be me, be free. Be good, be me, be free. Be good, me. Never mind, that's not exciting at all. It's just the same three words over and over again, guys. There once was a crow and a cat. They were sitting and watching a bat. It's sucking blood, said the crow. And then the cat answered, let us now go. <laughs> so they ran and they ran away from the bat, the crow and the cat. <laughs> this is a little bit terrifying. And these are my notes on the back. Again, you can pause it if you want to read it. I don't know if I'm going to read them all. This is my art project. This was a picture from when I was in Odyssey of the Mind. My team got 13th place out of 52 teams in our category. And we made little, like, mousetrap cars. Oh, wait, here's a big binder. Oh, my God. I hit myself in the face with it. Here's my fourth grade picture. I'll just pull one out with a little plastic sleeve to show you. School pictures. Pretty cute back then. Buzzle bums are little fairy-like creatures with the most vivid blue-green skin. They have bright yellow dragonfly-style wings. They have long noses and a curved shape and in a curved shape, and no eyelashes or eyebrows. In fact, they have no hair at all. They are two inches tall, head to toe, and their wingspan is three inches wide. They are very skinny besides their wings. They have claws, but they rarely use them. They have tiny little webbed feet. They sew pieces of socks together for clothes. They eat anything small they, they can manage to chew that isn't living, but their favorite foods are earwax, feathers, and cotton balls. They can be found anywhere, but you have to be somewhere who respe someone who respects buzzle bums, or, they can't, or you can't seal, see or feel them. They are so insect-like that, they so insect that some mistake them for strange butterflies. They can be good or bad, it depends on their mood. When they are happy or sad, their eyes turn green, their clothes turn blue, and they are good. When they are angry or scared, their clothes turn purple and their eyes turn red and they turn bad. Oh, well, that's pretty deep, actually. They are stronger than they appear and they can turn invisible. They can't bear to see their reflection. Buzzle bums can brainwash you and the only way to cure it is zid... Ah, I have a text. Zinander mist. One drop is enough, but it is only found in the center of the root of the lilac flower. Their job is to kill all other bad monsters and they rarely fail. Buzzle bums are awesome. What kind of reader am I? I've loved to read since ever since I learned how. I always read at least two books at a time. I read in almost all of my free time, and it's not uncommon for me to finish a book in a day. I like to pick books on my own, but I definitely don't hesitate to read recommended books. I love Animorph books. I'm very excited because I got the whole series. I like to read all kinds of genres, except I don't always enjoy history or nonfiction. I love thick books and book series because then you have time to get to know the characters better. I have several favorite authors and look forward to read aloud each day. I also love it when my little brother reads to me. Some good books inspire me to read, but mostly my older brother does. He has at least two bookshelves packed full of his favorite books and recommends them to me all the time. It's like a library. I, pen I plan to keep reading for the rest of my life and write some too. I love to read. And there's a little star that goes along with it. I don't really want to take it out of the sleeves. I'm just going to hold it upside down. It's like a bunch of buildings with little labels. It's Zilly's Shop. Something I can't read. Vet Handy Hotel 200 colors and they're like flopped on either side it's like purple and yellow because those are like my favorite colors for the longest time oh this is interesting okay so i still write time capsules every year but i only have the ones that i wrote like from last year the year before that and the year before that so this one is the one i wrote in third grade and opened in fourth grade dear me my favorite colors are turquoise and yellow favorite animals kittens pups and swans lucky number five i think i look good in black my style is all of the lighter colors I love the book Wild Magic and hope there is a sequel when I open this letter again. Aw, oh, I was disappointed. I still have that. It's right there. It was a really good book, guys. It, it was actually, it was pretty good. I kind of want to read it again. I get really excited when I think about Wild Magic. That's all. <laughs> I love the movie Wally and I'm excited to see Up, Bolt, Caroline, and Desperu. I love the songs Unwritten and Pocket Full of Sunshine. I love the ice cream flavors Rainbow and Cotton Candy. I love lasagna, and I love the game Guess Who and Zurika. I like the show Spongebob and Drake and Josh. I think I will weigh 70 when I open this letter. I weigh 63 now. Do I still have my store? Have I added any new stores? What are they? What are they? P.S. Will's Rule? It's like W-I-L-S Rule. 
Maybe that's some secret code that I no longer understand. I write in persuasive essays to convince my parents of stuff since the 2000s. Dear Mom and Dad, there are a lot of reasons why I need a new camera. First of all, I was used to having my own camera with my own personal pictures. Now I can't take my own pictures. Next, I can't take pictures for emails that take place in my room. I only use photo booths and that takes pictures in the office. Now I will have to secretly steal yours to use. What if I'm using it sometime and I accidentally delete the pictures that are already on it? That's not a threat. I don't know what is. You know I really want a camera. I have a new iPod Nano, but I don't want to use it as a camera. For one thing, I know it can take pictures and videos, but I want to save it for videos, since the lighting of the pictures is not too good. Secondly, I'm, it might use too much memory. It already runs out of batteries really quickly. Finally, my camera doesn't have to be expensive. I just want it to work. I'll do almost anything for a new camera. You know, I will do my part. First, I will always ask people for permission to take a picture of them. I won't take any inappropriate photos. I can also import it to the camera on my own. It's so easy, I could show you how. Next, I'll use my allowance to help buy it. Lastly, I'll even clean my room every Friday instead of just every other Friday. My desk, floors, shelves, closet, everything. I'll even try to help train, train Jessie if it would get me a camera. She's going to turn six soon. We should try to teach her some things since she's the right age for kindergarten. I could take pictures of Jessie being obedient. There are so many reasons why I need a camera. P.S. Just think about it, okay? Dancing Devil's Tessellation. So when I was little, I guess this would have been like fourth or fifth, I wrote a screenplay because I was in like a film, like movie club type thing to make learning how to make movies, um, which I'd kind of forgotten about until now. It's basically about them being kidnapped and then held for ransom and then arguing with the kidnapper and then escaping or something. This is my drawing of Hawkette. Just wait until you hear the story that goes along with it. I remember being really excited about it, really proud. I loved this story so much. I, Lexi, was a normal seven-year-old girl. I am shy, respectful, and curious. I have lime green eyes that are bigger than normal and seem to be lit up from the inside like a jack-o'-lantern. I have a little round nose and faded red lips. One day, I asked my mom, Lizzie, if I could go for a walk in the forest with my four-year-old sister, Ketta. I'm used to California, so I was born there and moved here to Florida six months ago, so now I live right next to a small forest. Sure, she said, but come back soon. Oh, and get a short-sleeved t-shirt on, it's hot out. Bring a sweater in case, though, it might rain. Got it, I replied. I ran upstairs to my room and changed into a purple t-shirt and jeans and tied a blue sweater around my waist. Then I ran to my sister's room. Ketta, I'm going to the forest. Wanna come? I banged on the door twice. Ketta? She mumbled something I couldn't hear and then said, yeah, but first let me finish grooming our new kitten, Leza. I, these are awesome names, just saying. I sat down and waited. In about five minutes, we were in the forest. We didn't have a dad. Well, mom never talked about him. And all we knew was that we heard mom say to herself that he died saving the world and his nickname was Hawkman. Weird, huh? We didn't believe it, though for some strange reason, ever since, my favorite animal had been a hawk. For some strange reason. As we waited, there was a slight breeze that blew back my curly red hair. I saw a tree with something carved in it and looked. My heart skipped at least four beats. Ketta, look. We gaped at it for a while, studying it, making sure it was real. On the tree, it said, Hawkman begins. All of a sudden, a hawk swooped down and scraped my left arm. Ack! I stumbled and fell to the ground, wincing in pain and horror. The pain! I winced and groaned, but even, but even while I felt the pain, I felt myself growing stronger. I blinked and opened my eyes. Ketta was running through the forest to get mom. Wait, the pain's gone now and I can see. Kat looked puzzled. You could always see. I realized how dumb I sounded. I glanced at my arm. All that was left was a silver line. Well, I have better vision. Hawk vision, I realized. Ketta's face turned blank, but I knew. I looked around for something sharp. I dug around a bit. There, buried slightly under the dirt was a small pocket knife. Dad's, most likely. I picked it up and pulled out a carving knife. Slowly, I carved in the tree under Hawkman begins. I wrote, Hawket is next. Kettle stared at the tree for a second and then smiled. This is gonna be fun, she announced. I grinned. We walked home silently. Then at the doorstep, Ketta asked, Well, can you morph? I thought for a second. Into a hawk? Maybe. I focused, concentrating on trying to morph. I didn't feel anything. After a moment, I said, No, I guess not. But Ketta just stared, amazed. What? I asked. You, you just sprouted feathers, Ketta exclaimed. I looked down. Sure enough, there were bunches of small red and brown feathers continuously poking out of my body through my shattered clothes. Shattered clothes? That's an interesting description. Quick, into the house! We can't let anyone see you! Ketta exploded. Don't think that actually happened. I think that she just exploded as though she exclaimed with her mouth. I ran into the house, Ketta right behind me. Mom stared. What happened? Wait, I know. <laughs> I stood by the fireplace and started to morph back into a human. All of a sudden, my veins felt like they were hot dogs on a barbecue. Ow! I fell to the ground and struggled away from the fire. Oh, ugh. Ouch. Mom ran and turned off the fire, then sat on the couch and patted the space next to her, telling me to sit down. I sat down. 
Honey, oh Lexi, your left arm, your father's was on his back. Anyway, stay away from the fire if possible. That's your only weakness. Water revives you, but only use it when you need to. Oh my gosh, I'm starting to remember this. It gets really good, you guys. You fight fierce fire. He's your only enemy. He shoots fire out of your eyes. He hates hawks. He kills everyone he sees. He killed Lazak, your father. We sat in silence. How did she know all of this? Then I asked, do I have any sidekicks? Yes, if you can find her. Her name is Jenny, but her nickname is Honor. Her main two powers are to morph and control nature. She's ten, but she lives somewhere else anyway. Hawkman only met her a few times. Oh, I replied. I knew I was on my own. Okay, so how do I know when, when and where to go? I asked as if I was excited. In the attic is a teller panel. It beeps when you need to help. You go to the attic when you hear it, and on the little purple panel it says where Fierce Fire is. The yellow one next to it has a picture of what he is doing. Then morph into a partway hawk and put the thin purple outfit on. The feathers poke right through it without, without making holes. That's your outfit. If the purple part gets torn or ripped, as long as you have a piece of it, it repairs itself and folds itself up by sunrise. It was so overwhelming. I was a seven-year-old. I suddenly heard beeping. I automatically ran up to the attic, my new layer. The purple panel said Treehouse Court. The picture was of a man with long black hair and a ponytail. He had thick red sweatpants on and a tight brown shirt. He had tattoos of fire on both his arms and legs and a picture of fire on his shirt. The sight of him made me shudder. He was fierce fire. He was shooting fire out of his eyes at a little boy about two or three years old. The boy screamed. He fell to the ground and rolled over, the fire missing him by a hair. I quickly morphed and slipped on the pur thin purple suit. I opened the attic window and flew through it. I went, <laughs> I went to Treehouse Court. When I got there, I saw the little boy cowering behind a kiddie pool set up for water fun. I circled the situation, wondering how and when to jump in. I dove on Fierce Fire, ripping three big cuts in his back with my talons. To my surprise, the wounds healed instantly. Uh-oh, I thought. <laughs> I backed up into the sky. I dove toward the kiddie pool, missing several blows of fire. The little boy screamed. I grabbed him tightly in my arms and flew past someone's backyard. I set the boy on the roof and said, Whatever you do, hold on to the chimney and don't move. I got to go get Mr. Bad Guy. Be careful, Superwoman, the boy yelled as I jumped back into the sky. Fierce fire aimed. Fire whizzed into the sky. If I dodged it, it would hit the boy. I hurtled toward the fire. Water revives you, but only use it when you need to, Mom had said. The fire hit me. I hit the fire. With the last of my strength, I aimed myself directly above a big bucket of water balloons. Then I just hoped. I screamed and winced in the sky. Then I fell. Down, down toward the water. My head was spinning. My breathing slowed. My heart stopped. Then, paloosh! I hit the water. My head was clear. My heart was fine. I could breathe. Fire? What fire? I emerged from the water, grinning. Fierce Fire stepped back. Hello, Fierce Fire. I giggled. Me talk it. Why would you giggle? People cheered, and Fierce Fire screamed in rage. But still he stepped back. His feet lit on fire, and his hair stood up straight. He burst into the sky like a rocket and ran away from the scene. I went to get the boy and returned him to his parents. I got thanked several times, and then flew back home, ready and excited for my next called mission. That left me emotionally exhausted. I think I wrote another one about like this, I, I know I did, about this like girl who like could turn into an elephant because she like ate a peanut at the zoo and then like she like turned into an elephant because she ate the peanut and then like an elephant like grabbed her from his pin and like taught her how to be an elephant. I am excited and nervous to go to middle school for a few reasons. First, I'm excited to get new lockers. It is going to be fun to have a place to keep my own things in. I don't want to lose anything, but I'm very good at organizing, so I think I'll be good. I also am excited for longer lunches, as I, as long as I don't have to take it for granted as and eat so slow that I don't even finish. Okay, fair enough. The final thing I'm excited about is getting to know the students and teachers my, at my new school. I hope I like most everyone. <laughs> I know a lot of the teachers because my brother is going there now. As you can see, I am very excited about middle school, but I also have some doubts. I hope I'll like it as much as I think I will. So what this is, is we made like, it was like one of the things where you like throw the eggs or like drop them off the top of the roof, except you like try to like build something around them so that they don't break. So this is my explanation of my project. I set up my egg with a lot of thought. I wrapped it up in tape for extra support and then uh, set to work. First I wrapped a blown up Ziploc bag around it for protection and air resistance. Then we taped balloons on either side so when it landed the balloons would hit first, causing it to bounce. Next, we made a parachute out of straws, string, and paper. Finally, we tested it out to make sure it would work. Oh, this is when um, at my school I um, ran for secretary and I don't think that I got it. Oh, here's my fantasy basketball team. Anthony Rudolph, Carlos Boozer, Brooke Lopez, Anthony Morrow, Benno Udria, 
Kevin Love, Dirk Nowitzki. So that is all I'm going to share with you today. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you all next week. Bye bye.